and they delivered. Yes, the ECB with back-to-back -back three quarters of a point increases on the rate. Can the Bank of England bring rising prices under control? The Federal Reserve raising interest rates by 50 basis points to a new range. Have you been barraged with tons of relentless headlines around rate hike off late? So what do rate hikes mean and how does it affect your money? Before we dive in, I would like to get some disclaimers out of the way. This video is for someone who says, explain to me like I'm a five-year-old, just putting it out there. Also, this is for educational purposes only and not a financial advice. With that out of the way, let's get started. If you've heard of rate hikes, then you've certainly heard of central banks. Central banks are an essential part of a country in that they are the engines of an economy. They are responsible for the economic and monetary policy, as well as managing the currency of a country. Some of the examples of central banks are Federal Reserve in the US, Bank of England in the UK, ECB in Europe, RBI in India, etc. Their role is to stabilize economic activity within a country by controlling the supply of money. One of the ways they achieve this is by regulating interest rates, either by increasing or decreasing depending on the need. So to keep it relevant to recent rate hike events, let's look at why central banks across most nations have been increasing rates of late. Like I said earlier, the role of central bank is to keep the economy stable, not too hot, not too cold, but just right. When central banks see that the economy is overheated, they jump into its rescue by raising interest rates to cool the system and restore stability. Now that leads us to the next point as to why are economies across the globe overheated? The biggest reason is inflation. Inflation is essentially a rate at which prices of goods and services increase across the economy. This is caused either by more demand when supply is unchanged but people are overspending, or reduced supply when demand is unchanged but supply is hampered, or both. Higher inflation in simple terms is when your money loses its value and everything becomes more pricier leading to diminishing wealth. Now that we know what inflation is, let's look at what caused inflation. If you look at Western countries, the US in particular, the impact of pandemic led to a $5 trillion avalanche of stimulus pay of free money. Yes, the US central bank printed too much money during COVID crisis and distributed free money to common people and businesses. This caused overspending while the supply was still impacted by the factory closures across the globe. Now, if we shift the focus to other economies across the world who are facing high inflation, pandemic put many households, jobs and businesses at risk, stumbling economic growth. Then, of course, the war in Ukraine further pushed the situation past the apex by causing huge disruption in supply, triggering a spike in prices overall. This led to a ripple effect throughout the global economy, causing the inflation to soar to dangerous levels. Some of the developed countries like the UK saw nearly 11% inflation, the highest in 40 years. The target inflation rate set by most central banks around the world is at 2%, so you get the seriousness of the situation. All this led to central banks stepping in and raising rates to cool down the overheated economy. They have been doing so for the past 12 months, with the most recent hike being just last week by major economies like the US, UK and Europe. Higher interest rate translates to an attractive savings rate, making borrowing more expensive. This naturally encourages people and businesses to save rather than borrow. Decreased borrowing and increased savings reduces the supply of money in circulation, which helps lower inflation. It's not all black and white. The rise in interest rates have a trickling effect on consumers, businesses and investors to varying degrees. When central banks raise interest rates, all commercial banks and financial institutions within a country start implementing the new rate. This is done by providing higher rates to common people and businesses on their savings 
while charging interest rates on any lendings such as mortgages, business loans, personal loans and even bonds. So how do interest rate hikes translate into consumer and business behavior? What is the impact? First, let's look at the impact on savings. When interest rate rises, savings obviously become more profitable. Common people and businesses can benefit from competitive rate hikes from banks and financial institutions on their savings accounts, money market accounts, fixed term deposits, etc. So it's a win-win. Now, if we look at the impact on borrowing, however, it has an opposite effect. With rising interest rates, the cost of borrowing goes up. Whether you are a first-time home buyer or due for a mortgage renewal, or if you are in need of a personal loan, it will now cost you more as you will pay more interest on loans. Of course, your credit card debt becomes more expensive as well. Typically, the borrowing rate is always higher than the bank rate due to the credit risk, i.e. the risk of default or loan not being paid back. So you pay more interest on your loan than you would gain from your savings for the same amount. For instance, if the base rate set by central bank is at 4%, the normal savings rate is around 4%, but the loan rate is generally higher at 5% or above, depending on your lender, costing you a lot more. Next, let's look at the impact on businesses. With increased rates, business loans will incur higher rates. This means companies will have increased costs, making it more challenging for them to perceive new ventures, which in turn will cause lower production, further leading to layoffs in an attempt to cut cost. This will obviously trigger a rise in unemployment, forcing people to spend less due to low consumer wealth. Let's look at the impact on stocks. Higher interest rates have a negative impact on the stock market, but why? As I mentioned earlier, higher interest rates make borrowing expensive and thereby increasing the operating cost of a company and lowering its profitability. This will obviously impact its stock value. Besides, risk-averse investors might prefer to move their money from stocks to safer investments like fixed deposits or savings accounts or even bonds, earning better interest rate, causing the stock prices to fall further. So, higher interest rates tend to negatively impact stocks, at least in the short term. Lastly, let's look at the impact on bonds. Bonds are particularly very sensitive to interest rate changes. Bond prices are inversely correlated to interest rates, i.e. when the interest rates rise, the market value of existing bonds fall instantly. This is because new bonds will come into the market offering higher interest rates or coupon rates and the existing bonds issued before the rate hike will decline in price. After all, why buy a 4% bond when you can buy a 7% bond from the same issuer, right? Impact of rate hikes differ depending on if you're holding an existing bond or you're buying a new one. Let's look at an example. Today is 6th of Feb 2023. On 10th Jan 2023, Jack buys a US corporate bond for $10,000. So essentially, Jack lends $10,000 to a US corporate for 10 years in return for a 10% annual interest. In this example, $10,000 is the face value or the price of the bond. On 4th February 2023, Fed raised interest causing the interest on new bonds issued on and after 4th of February to go up 15%. So now the value of Jack's 10-year bond, which he bought a month prior to the rate hike, is less attractive as it pays only 10% interest. So if Jack decides to sell his bond today, he will need to lower the price of his existing bond to adjust for the difference in interest rate. As a result, the price of Jack's bond will reduce to $8,000. It all comes down to simple supply versus demand. It's important to note though that this is only going to affect Jack should he wish to sell his bond prematurely. If he continues to hold the bond until maturity, Jack will continue to receive his 10% coupon on the $10,000 he lent to the corporate and then at the end of 10 years, he will get his $10,000 back as agreed at when the bond was issued. So to conclude, depending on your financial situation, rate hikes may affect some more than others. 
Rate hikes provide the best opportunity to increase your savings, either through savings accounts or through annuities or new bonds. But if you are an investor, you may experience short-term volatility with regards to your riskier investments. But if you have a well-diversified, resilient asset allocation, you should get through the turbulence without much damage. If you have debt, keep your levels manageable. Only borrow if it's essential. If it can't be avoided, then obviously look for the best deals possible. Sometimes it's worth waiting until the dust settles as eventually you're likely to get better rates when competition between lenders increases. Look for a 0% credit card for your day-to-day -day expenses. If you're worried about your future payments, consult a debt advisor or talk to your lender before it's too late. And with that, we have come to the end of today's learning. If you like today's content and found it useful, please feel free to leave a comment. I would like to hear from you. Take care until next time.